come on. We will win. Because we will hit all game. We are motivated. We are dedicated. Come on now. Come on now. We will win. Because we are the best on the field. Then we hit the field like all day like on the blue light, on the best light, this best light, this ground light, house call light, and it's sound light, and it's sound light, and it's sound light. Yeah. It's official. It's official. It's official. Combine season is upon us. I'ma do this here forever. Be cute. Forever. Forever, forever, I'ma do this here forever. Welcome everybody to the Short Sports Show. I am your host Daniel Short. Today is Wednesday, March 6, 2016. And if you know what that means, it is not March 6th. Uh, I completely put the wrong date. It is March 9th, 2016. And if you know what that means for NFL, that means only one thing. It is the official day. The new league year, 2016, officially starts today. This is New Year's Day for the NFL. It all starts today at 3 p.m. Central Time. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited. We've got a lot of news to talk about, tons of news. There's going to be even more after today's show. So be sure to follow me on Twitter at Short Sports Show. And uh, also, some other news that happened after last week's show. I didn't mean it to happen. I planned to do it uh, this upcoming or this today. I was going to do it, but uh, everything just kind of rolled all into one. Uh, I now have a website. Yes, I do. The Short Sports Show now has a website. It is www.theshortsportshow.squarespace.com. Be sure to go check it out. Uh, we have tons of articles already written. Uh, I've, I've done a majority of them, but I've also uh, added my friend, one of my closest friends, Dimitri. Uh, he is now going to be a writer as well, covering everything in the NFL spectrum. Uh, you know, obviously, we're going to get news from... The NFL, college football, that's going to be majority, the bulk of the stories. But as well, we're going to have NBA, Major League Baseball as the NBA playoffs come closer and the uh, and Major League Baseball starts you know, heating up in, in just a couple of weeks in a month. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is a short sports show. Uh, due to weather, we will not, there's only going to be a couple of videos uh, of the short sports show, I'm not going to risk uh, my camera, several hundred dollar camera. I am not going to risk it uh, with a, a, a power out a power outage that could potentially happen here in the, the C- central Texas area. I'm not going to risk it. It's OK if we miss one sh- complete show. Uh, it's going to speed up my time with rendering and all the other video processing stuff. So uh, but for you guys, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spreaker.com, Stitcher Radio, uh, the whole show will be there. You obviously you're already listening to it. Uh, so no worries. But if you want to go check over on my YouTube channel, uh, I got tons of other videos worth talking about, worth watching. As of course, we'll talk about the NFL and some news that happened there. So let's go ahead and move on to the college football. I was going to say the NFL. We got some college football news first. And when this story first came out, I originally took it as nothing i was like no that's not true it's just someone's a little jumpy there's no way it happened well it did it officially happened it's been it's now in the record books it's done it is it it has happened i haven't seen any video of it there might have been some i just didn't look for it but it has happened wendell williams a wide receiver out of the university of cumberland's no idea where that is. No idea if that's like a Division 4, 3 program. I don't even think there's a Division 4. It might be 6-man. I don't know. Either way, he was recorded at a 4.19-second 40-yard dash at the NFL Regional Combine in Minnesota. Now, Williams is an NAIA. So that's what it is. All-American as a kick returner, averaging 32.4 yards per return and three touchdowns. 
This guy broke Chris Johnson's record of 4.24. Had he been wearing Adidas, which I'm assuming he didn't because Adidas hasn't said anything about paying a guy $1 million, this guy would have got paid because you know there's no way this guy's getting drafted. Yes, 4.19 is blazing fast, but you could tell quickly find out that the NFL doesn't really care what you wear in a Nike hyper cool you know, tights, whatever, whatever you want to call it. They don't care. Scouts don't care. 4.19 is amazing. But when you come out of the University of Cumberland, to no disrespect, you are most likely not getting drafted unless you just broke about every single record. That That's just how it is. So he did it. And all hats off to him. Awesome, amazing job. Congratulations. You broke the record. You now have the fastest record that most likely no one is going to break because I don't think anybody would ever get close to a 4.19. Granted, it was a 4.19, you know, just a tenth of a second uh, or a hundredth of a second, um, close to a 4.2. So, oh, well, but Wendell Williams, congratulations. You missed your opportunity. If you knew you were even that close a fast, should have worn Adidas. Now, I'm sure Adidas would have said, oh, well, it had to be at the real NFL Combine so they could get out of it like they did uh, past couple years without paying people. But either way, Wendell Williams, congratulations, buddy. And it seems like the news out of Illinois just keeps happening. And over a two-year span, this has been absolutely ridiculous for this, uh, for football, for the uh, University of Illinois. They fired their football coach, Bill Cubitt, on Saturday after coaching the team to a five and second, excuse me, five and seven record on interim basis last season, Cubitt was signed to a two year contract on November 29th of 2015. Just a few months ago, he signed a two year contract to become the head coach for the University of Illinois. That was shortly lived. Now, he will still remain. Received the remaining balance, which is approximately $985,000 to do absolutely nothing but go back home. Uh, for the upcoming season, the university said the athletic director on his first official day as the athletic director straight up said, you and your son are gone. You're fired. You Bye. I, I don't want you. The athletic director just said bye. He, he, he fired them. Just like that. Now, you know, nothing's too shocking or nothing's too shocking. Uh, Nothing is too uh, great about Cubit other than he had the team. Players loved him. And, you know, when you're it's in March, we're in March right now. And you had well now at the recording of the show, you had two more days until spring practice would have started. And you fired your coach just, you know, a few days before that. Not really the best of times now. When you do something like that, something so radical, something so crazy, you got to have a guy in mind. And that guy's got to be willing to take the job. You've already basically talked about it and said, hey, I've been thinking about this since you you don't have a job. How about you come back somewhat home and you start coaching our team? I mean, I can make it happen. I'm just I'm about to start athletic director. Well, that's what he basically did. Now, Whitman, and I didn't put his first name in for some stupid reason, uh, said, quote, I appreciate the leadership that Bill Cubitt provided our football program during what has been unquestionably a very tumultuous time. Uh, now, Cubitt told the ESPN he was stunned by the news, said, quote, total shock. Recruiting was going good. We have five kids in today. The offseason program, the weight coach said it's the best you've ever seen. It's a shock. It really is. The bad thing is I had four new assistants come here. Three guys just moved their families up here in the last three weeks, end quote. And those three guys, while they'll get a contract payout most likely, now are going to be living in Illinois for no apparent reason because they no longer have a job. Now, again, Whitman, the athletic director, did have a guy in mind, and that was Lovey Smith. And Lovey Smith hasn't coached in college for t- since 21 years ago when he was a DB's coach at the Ohio State University. Does it really matter? I don't really think so. People keep bringing it up that 
Oh, he hasn't coached in the college ranks since 21 years ago. He's not going to know a damn thing about recruiting. I highly doubt that. Given his success that he had at being the head coach for the Chicago Bears and how it all played out and, you know, taking him to the three NFC Championship games uh, or three. Yeah, I think that's right. He also won the NFC North three times. Uh, going to the Super Bowl, things he did for Chicago, for Illinois. I don't think it's going to be a hard time recruiting for him. I think he's a likable guy. I think younger athletes are going to like him and say, oh, hey, he was just, you know, a few years ago, he was the head coach of the Chicago Bears. And a lot of those guys, you know, high school players in the state of Illinois, they're going to be like, I remember you when I was in middle school and stuff like that. I I was watching the Chicago Bears. I was watching you take the team to the playoffs. I was watching you take the team to the Super Bowl and and the great defense they had. What is this program going to be like in Illinois? I think it's going to be easy for him to recruit. I don't think because he hasn't coached in 21 years in college, I don't think that's going to make a difference. Sure, there's going to be some tweaks between the NFL and college, of course, and some of the rules and what he can and can't do, something that's going to have to refresh his mind. But overall, coaching these kids, I don't think there's going to be any type of, you know, anything that's going to hurt him. Now, the only thing that's really going to hurt him is – being now the head coach in March and not, you know, let's say, you know, December, January, somewhere where normal coaches end up getting fired and getting a job. So it's going to hurt him. Um, but some of the several players took to Twitter and this was before they found out Lovey Smith was going to be the head coach or potentially be the head coach. And they just found out through Cubit's dismissal. Uh, Keyshawn Vaughn said, quote, I haven't ever been on campus a full year. Or, uh, excuse me. I haven't uh, even been on campus a full year and have had two coaches now going on number three. Uh, then another guy said, quote, I'm refreshing my Twitter feed for updates on my own football team for crucial information. This is crazy. Uh, again, Illinois was uh, scheduled to start practice on March 11th. But since the release uh, on Saturday, women said it would delay until coaches hired. That's been hap- that's happened, and now um, they said when they'll start spring practice here coming up somewhat soon. You can read more about it as I wrote about it on the Short Sports Show. The link is in the description and down below. Again, it's the Short Sports Show dot Squarespace dot com. Squarespace hooked it up with a pretty solid deal, and I'm happy for it. Uh, it, it looks beautiful. It looks absolutely beautiful. So go check it out. I've, I've already tweeted about it. Uh, the link again is in the description, no matter where you're listening to. So please go check it out and let me know what you guys think. All right. Some other college football news, just three more, uh, quick little things. And then we'll move on to the NFL. Uh, Ole Miss defensive lineman Breland speaks was arrested early Friday morning and charged with driving under the influence uh, Ole Miss head coach Hugh Freeze said in a statement, quote, Breland's poor choice does not meet the expectations of our program and there will be consequences, end quote. Now, he played all 13 games last year, starting two and finished with 32 tackles, five and a half tackles for a loss and one sack and was one of the favorites in replacing Robert Kim Dietschy, who also has uh, made a, a poor choice as well. And it seems like Hugh Freeze just has a lot of players that just make really poor choices choices but again their college will blow it off uh so and also we'll see what his actual whether he's gonna get suspended for the first game or maybe it's just running flipping tires somewhere along along those lines uh kansas you know when you kansas i honestly think they should just drop out of football uh you know what's the point i know back in 07 they were ranked in the top five and you know you had some a few good players but man it's just it's been a rough patch of years, hasn't it? Uh, and, and only to Kansas would this happen. Their starting quarterback, Ryan Willis, who will be a sophomore this year, will be limited this spring due to a wrist injury. No, not because he, he fell, not because he uh, you know, was working out. Something productive towards football or an accident. It was because he was playing pickup basketball and he injured his wrist. So now he's going to be limited in spring. When you're a starting quarterback of a football program, 
You shouldn't be playing pickup basketball. I get it. You're young. You want to have fun. You want to play uh, with your buds. That's all great. But you've got to realize you are the starting quarterback for Kansas University or University of Kansas. Uh, no, Kansas University is KU. You've got to think a little bit ahead and say, you know, I could hurt myself doing this. I don't want to do this. Now, of course, you can take that well. You can hurt yourself running. You can hurt yourself walking, walking to class. True. But that's just accidental, and that's just, oh, well, you know, God kind of said I had to go through that, so I had to. But when you're playing p- pickup basketball, you had a choice that to not play basketball. So, you know, if you're trying to tr- change this program, you should have just thought a little bit ahead. And the final bit of news is Oklahoma running back Samaj P. Ryan, uh, obviously one of the best running backs in college football. It's going to be fun to watch him this season. Not against my TCU Horned Frogs, but... Uh, when he's not playing TCU, it's going to be fun to watch him. He will be sidelined for spring ball after undergoing a procedure on his ankle. He injured in the Orange Bowl against Clemson. This was um, expected. So for Oklahoma fans, don't, I'm sure you already knew. But for in case you didn't, don't think that, oh, man, what's going to happen? He's, he's supposed to play. Uh, this is our main guy, blah, 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 blah. It was expected. Bob Stoops, they all knew. P. Ryan knew. Uh, it just happened a little bit later than I think most would have liked, but he'll be fine. He's obviously going to miss spring, um, but should be good to go come summer, come fall, uh, and, and start playing. Uh, last year, rushed for 1,300 yards and one of the top running backs in college football. Now we switch over to the NFL. We had a ton of news, and again, we're going to have a ton of news here. Um like William Gay, he just signed a seven and a half million, uh, three year deal that just happened right now. Obviously, you guys already heard about it because this shows up a little bit later, but that's just what happens on the short sports show. So over the week and yesterday, for the NFL, it's been not sad, but a little bit, a little bit sad. So for people watching on video now. Uh, I'm making a quick video for this on Calvin Johnson and Peyton Manning. I know there's a light right there. It's pretty bright. Got another one over there. That's because here in Central Texas, in case you just heard that, we're getting pounded right now by rain and thunderstorms, so I got to make this kind of quick. But anyways, back for the NFL. Calvin Johnson has decided to hang it up, and it's sad. The most prolific wide receiver in franchise history and holds just about every single record you can think of for the Detroit Lions, has retired after nine seasons, and I don't want to say rightfully so, but given some of the injuries he's had, and it's kind of lingering on, and the lack of success, and not wanting to be that guy who went on to play for someone else, it, it all comes to an end. So Calvin Johnson uh, has accumulated over 11,000 receiving yards, uh, seven 1,000 yard seasons, and six Pro Bowl invitations. Uh, and he, the Lions announced on Tuesday that Johnson had filled out his retirement papers with the NFL in, in advance for the new league year, which starts today, Wednesday, March 9th at 3 p.m. Central Time. Uh, Lions quarterback Matthew Safford said in a statement Tuesday that Johnson will be missed by fans and teammates alike. Quote, it was such an honor to play the game with one of the best of all time. I will cherish the lessons I've learned from him and the friendship we have forged over the past sev- seven years. He is truly one of a kind and in his humility and grace both on and off the field. We have all learned from Calvin with how he treated his family, his work, and his friends. So, you know, it sucks, but for the Lions, you know, obviously you losing a, a guy like that, you're, again, the best wide receiver uh, for the Detroit Lions in their entire history statistically, and I think, I, I think it'd be hard to argue that he just isn't overall uh, their best receiver. Uh, he was due to make $24 million against the cap in 2016. The Lions will save at least $11.1 million in cap space so that way they can now use starting today with free agents who they're going to keep because if you look at their roster and you look at the receivers returning right now that are under contract 
You have Golden Tate with 90 receptions from last season. And then you go down to another guy that I can't remember his name, only had 10 receptions. And then you have Corey Fuller, who had like four or five receptions. Those are their leading receivers with receptions from last season. You got a guy with 90 in Golden Tate, which we've seen. I don't know if he is a number one wide receiver. Uh, I, I think that's a little a little too much to think that he he might be number one caliber. Uh, and, and I'm not comparing him to a, a Calvin Johnson saying that he's got to be that great. I'm saying just overall on a team, is he a number one receiver? Is he more like a slot guy? Is he more of a number two, a kind of, you know, a compliment player? Uh, so that's yet to be seen. And I really, and honestly, I don't think he's a number one, uh, receiver, your go-to guy, but you have him at 90 receptions. You have Golden State, 90 receptions. Then you have another guy that I don't remember his name. Lions fans will know, uh, he only had 10 receptions and then Corey Fuller with four or five. That's it. So with the 11.1 million, obviously they're not going to go spend that on a big receiver because it really isn't a main receiver out there, Travis Benjamin. He just signed with the, uh, excuse me, with the San Diego Chargers. He's off the market and it's really not a receiver. You're like, I want him to join our team. Now for the Lions, there might be another guy that could be a third or fourth or, or a second receiver if they plan on moving Tate to first overall or, you know, their first wide receiver. Um, but obviously they, they're in the position that maybe they can get Treadwell. There's Doxon. Um, there's, uh, you know, Corey Coleman, but I think they're going to want a big guy like Treadwell, like Doxon that can be suitable for a a number one wide receiver. Coleman's more of a speedy guy, your slot guy, not really a guy that's going to be your go-to receiver. So, uh, again, with that, they have 11.1 million in cap space. Uh, they still have dead money. They're going to have to eat this year, but that's just how it is. And they did say that, um, their contract, that they, settled some you know things in respect of to each parties so it could help out each t- uh for the team and for J- Johnson to still get paid um and again with with Calvin Johnson if you look at the records most in career receptions for the Detroit Lions 731 career, career receiving yards 11,619 uh most in a season which he broke that's the NFL record of 1964 not the year but the actual numbers uh, 1,964 um, 329 yards receiving in a game. That was the most, uh, and a career receiving touchdowns, 83 and receiving touchdowns in a season was 16. Um, just absolutely amazing. And what he did for, uh, the Detroit lions and at 30 years old, he's retiring to get that at first football wise. It makes sense. Overall, if you look at your average person, I don't care how old you are. Let's say you're in your twenties or you're, uh, your late twenties and early thirties, and one of your best friends is thirty years old and he's retiring. You're supposed to have like another thirty years in you to keep working, but congratulations, to Calvin Johnson, one of the best ever. Is he a Hall of Famer though? That that's what a lot of people want to know. If you look at the stats, is he because he he ranks around? Uh, let's see, I have it up here somewhere. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Oh. Shoot, did I not put it? I think it was like 43rd and 34th or something like that. 43rd and uh, maybe 63, I don't know. Somewhere around that range in in career receptions and receiving yards for Calvin Johnson. But is he a Hall of Famer? You know, I I don't know if he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I think he's definitely a Hall of Famer. The way he impacted this game and the way he impacted the youth uh, and his community in Detroit, as well as overall in the nation, uh, as everybody just loves Calvin Johnson because, you know, and I wrote this uh, on on the Short Sports Show website video, YouTube, guys. Please go check it out, the shortsportshow.squarespace.com. And, and I wrote about it and I said, you know, the things that he did, he, you never saw Calvin Johnson, even in the worst years for the Lions, which there were many, many years of that. Only two years that probably weren't bad is than those years when they went to the playoffs. Uh, you never saw him throw his helmet and, and throw a tantrum like maybe Des Bryant does or, you know, Odell Beckham. Some of the younger guys that all the young fans and everybody seem to love, which no hate on them. And rightfully so, they you right to love them because the talent they have and what they do. But you'll see them throw tantrums. You'll see them yell at teammates. You'll see them 
you know, not really carry themselves at the highest level. They may play at the highest level, but they don't carry themselves at the highest level. You look at Calvin Johnson, and he's gone through terrible quarterbacks. He's gone. He, he was. He played with a quarterback that ran out of the own, out of his own end zone for safety. You know, and he played for a team that didn't even win in a, a game at all. He has uh, been just about everywhere in the spectrum, other than great for a season uh, as a team. So, but you never saw him throw his helmet, yell at a coach, yell at Matthew Stafford or any of those of those other terrible quarterbacks or at, at another receiver. You, you might have saw him teach and, and tell, hey, this is what we need to do, blah, blah, blah. But you never saw, saw him just explode or be weird in any kind of way. You always saw them saw him smiling or, or teaching up a young guy. Um, you know, not saying he never got frustrated with the game because it's hard not to get frustrated when you're playing with, with the type of team that he had. But given all of that, you, you know, if Odell Beckham was on, was on that team, you would have saw him fight with every DB. You would have saw him fight with his own quarterback. You would have saw him throw tantrums there. Des Bryant the same way. And those are guys that just come straight to mind. I'm sure there's plenty, plenty, plenty more. Um, but you never saw him do that. You, you saw him calm, respectful, and still dominated the game no matter what. So for that, I think the impact that he had, his character that he had on and off the field is what's going to push him. I don't, again, believe it'll be uh, a first ballot, especially I'm going to talk about it here in just a second uh, of the 2021 class. That is when he will be eligible. That's five years from now uh, is when he'll be eligible. And you'll see that's probably going to be one of the best class in Hall of Fame history, uh, if everything stands the way it is. But, again, thank you, Calvin Johnson, for everything you did. I believe he is a Hall of Famer. I don't believe he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, as, again, Jerry Rice and Steve Larger are the only first ballot receivers, and it's probably going to stay that way for any other receiver. Uh, But, Calvin Johnson, thank you. And please, guys, let me know on Twitter, at Short Sports Show, and on my website, theshortsportshow.squarespace.com, and the Facebook page, The Short Sports Show. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you believe Calvin Johnson is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Say yes, say no. Let me know why. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'm out. Peace. And for the show, don't worry, don't worry. That was just for YouTube. That was just for YouTube. And I'm trying to check this. Getting a lot of tweets here. Getting a lot of tweets here. Anything we're talking about? No. Nope, not at all. And then Peyton Manning also retired. Uh, he announced his retirement on Monday. I have the not entire. I thought it was the full retirement video. I didn't know that there was an entire 45 minute press conference for him. But I do have his entire speech from beginning to end on my YouTube channel, the sports, uh, the short sports show. So go check it out there. His entire speech, everything word for word, everything's up there. Um, now Manning had one year left on his contract, but he was. Wanting to walk, he's willing to walk away after the Super Bowl win, walk off on a great note. Um, and honestly, he's gonna go down as probably uh, this guy started a huge debate that I really don't want to get into, but arguably the best regular season quarterback in NFL history. I know there's gonna be Tom Brady, I know there's gonna be a few other quarterbacks, but five MVPs, 14 Pro Bowl nods. And uh, a league record 539 touchdown passes. Uh, you know, so his retirement I, I, it was more expected. Uh, a lot of people said Calvin Johnson's was too. I thought there still might have been more hope for him to play uh, and, and not really Peyton. So that leads us to the 2021 Hall of Fame class. Now, Peyton Manning and... Calvin Johnson have to wait five years. Everybody has to wait five years after you retire. There's somebody watching. It's kind of weird. Uh, you have to wait five years after you retire to be in- inducted to the Hall of Fame. Now, with that, there's a lot of good ones. You know, Justin Tuck has retired as well. Jared Allen. Uh, let's see who else. We have Charles Woodson, Logan Mankins, Marshawn Lynch. And there's someone else I'm leaving off that I just saw earlier who also retired, who had a pretty good year, uh, career as well. Uh, or Heath Miller. He, Heath Miller was also another one. So you have those guys. You have Calvin Johnson. You have Peyton Manning along with that list. 
Since 1970, there's only been nine classes that featured three first ballot Hall of Famers or first ballot nominees. Uh, and so when you think about these other, you know, some people say Calvin, Charles, Payton, or maybe even Jared Allen, or you know, I doubt they'll say Marshawn Lynch, but a lot of these guys are going to say, oh, they, they got to be first ballot automatically. They're just great. True, but you've got to think about who's on the previous years, the 2019 to 2020 list that might not get in the first time, but might get in this next year. And that's what we're going to look at. Uh, for example, Ed Reed. He's eligible in 2019, but Troy Palomalu is under consideration for 2020. So let's say one of them doesn't get in and, and then pushes another one. And then what if they're both eligible? I doubt they would both be eligible. I think, you know, they, they got a pretty good solid foot in the first or second year. Uh, and it gives them some time frame, 2019, 2020. But weird things can happen. Uh, and what if they get pushed? That can hurt the 2021 class. I mean, it's not going to hurt it too much. Both of those players are great. But it might hurt. it's going to hurt the other guys' chances. Uh, then you also have Reggie Wayne. In 20, he's old, uh, even though he's hasn't officially retired, somewhat he has. Uh, he was talking to you, Rich Eisen said he hasn't, but they're already listing him as he that he did, and they go by your playing time. So he's up in 2020. Now, again, of receivers, only Jerry Rice and Steve Largent are the only first time ballot wide receivers, and they really want to keep it that way. The Jerry Rice was obviously the last one, they want to keep it that way for a long time. That's why T.O. didn't get in. That's why Mar Marvin Harrison didn't get in the first time. Chris Carter, he just cried his way onto it, uh, but he eventually got in. But if Reggie Wayne doesn't get in in 2020, boom, that pushes in. And only three players, I think, uh, of that list, the, the kind of recent players, only three of them can get in because then it's like two seniors, or one and two seniors, and then uh, like a, a, an owner or coach, something along that line, and then that's it. So only those three players. So I, I think my list, and I want to know what yours is, obviously it's going to be Peyton. Obviously it's going to be Charles Woodson. But then who else? Is Calvin Johnson the first ballot Hall of Famer? I don't think so. I think he's a Hall of Famer. I don't think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I know the show has already heard this, but for the YouTube video, uh, they might not have. And, uh, you know, then you can have every Troy Palomalu, you can have Reggie Wayne or Johnson, Marshawn Lynch, maybe who knows, but we're going to have a stack class in 2019 through 2022, 2023. And depending on when Tom Brady retires, whether he retires after 2016 season, I'm not saying he will, but you got to think about these things. So, uh, those are going to be great, but let's look at the past ones. And with this class, the, that potential class of Manning, Woodson, uh, Reggie Wayne, Ed Reed, Troy Palomalu, Megatron, not all of those guys can get in, of course, at the same time, but I'm saying a group of those. Would that be better than these past class? Now, 1977, you had Bart Starr, great Green Bay Packers, quarterback, Gail Sayers. They were first time. We have Frank Gifford in that. In 1985, no matter what you think of him, as a football player, he was great. You had O.J. Simpson, uh, Roger Staubach, Joe Namath, and Pete Rozelle, who used to be the commissioner, all in one Hall of Fame class. Imagine watching that. that I, I'm sure that was great. I know there's highlights, but, man, that, should, that, that would have been a great thing to watch live. Uh, in 1993, you had Dan Fouts, Chuck Knoll, uh, Walter Payton were into the Hall of Fame. Amazing moment. You also had Larry Little at uh, offensive guard. And in 2000, you had Joe Montana and Ronnie Lott, first ballots. Uh, you also had ha uh, Howie Long and uh, the Steelers owner Dan Rooney. In 2006, you had the late great Reggie White, Troy Aikman, and Warren Moon all went in their first time. Great class. And in 2013, you had Larry Allen, Jonathan Ogden, and Warren Sapp. And if you want to label Chris Carter, I, I just hate Chris Carter. Player-wise, watch him. He's, he's good. Yeah, he broke. He did great things. Person-wise, I absolutely hate Chris Carter. He's annoying. He just cries, 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 cries. Uh, but anyways, we've had some really great classes. And I think the next big one is going to be that 2021. 
uh, class, depending on what 2019 or 2020 bring us with Ed Reed, Troy Palomalu, Reggie Wayne, maybe that class. He could have the entire U class up there, which I meant to put. I have my acceptance letter for the University of Miami. I didn't put it up here. I'm going to have it framed. I'm going to put it up here somewhere. I know we're in UW. I represent all my schools. Got TCU, got Texas State. Repping all my schools here. Um, but yeah, so that, that, it's going to be having some great class. So let me know what you believe who will be in your 2021 Hall of Fame class. And look at us talking crazy. It's 2016. We're already talking about 2021. Uh, but either way, it's, it's going to be a great class these next few years. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. On my website, theshortsportshow.squarespace.com. On my Twitter, at Short Sports Show. And the Facebook, the Short Sports Show uh, fan page. Be sure to check that out and uh, let me know what you guys think. Now, we move on to other news that we had. And that was it, actually. It was just moving on. An Atlanta Falcons coach asked former Ohio State cornerback Eli Apple if he was gay during a meeting at the combine. Now, it's been talked about for a while. I wanted to bring it up since it happened, you know, after the show last week. Now, Apple described a meeting Friday during an interview with Comcast Sports Net. Although he did not identify the coach, which who later came out and said who it was, not I didn't pick up the name. Uh, Falcons head coach Dan Quid- Quinn acknowledged the incidents in the statement saying, I'm really disappointed in a question that was asked by one of our co- coaches, end quote. If you really were, now this is against, uh, you're supposed to have like anti-discrimination laws and stuff like that. Something along that line should have been implemented, not just, I'm really disappointed in him. It won't happen again. Really? If if, if you were serious about that and if the NFL uh, was willing to take a stance on this, because what if Eli Apple was gay and he took offense and this whole thing would have blown up? Um but well, I'm not, I don't know if he is or not. I'm guessing he's not, but he hasn't made this a big story. So I'm, I'm assuming he's not, but you would have seen a huge all over the place and magnitude of what it would have been. Why not fire that coach? Why not fire him? If you're serious about it. I mean, uh, that, it's just you don't add, and, I, and there was like another weird question about, and I understand why they ask weird questions in, in a kind of a way. I don't think you should have gone that far, uh, because they said you know something about you know how how the reaction is and, and stuff like that, how they're going to react so quickly to that. What if they make a headline and what they're going to say uh, in case if they get in trouble in the future, or something like that. You know, or a player was asked, "Do you think your mom is attractive?" Like, where did these co- coaches come up with these questions? I There's probably some, like, stupid fake psychologist that thinks they know it all about sports psychology and says, hey, if you ask this question, I guarantee you're going to find out if this guy is a first-round player or not. Like, what? Wh- where does this come from? Why? It's just, I don't know. It's weird. Um, I'm surprised the NFL hasn't done anything with so much of, you know, trying to end discrimination, blah, blah, blah. Eli Apple played it off. He said no, but I don't know. I think that's just weird. Carolina Panthers are interested in Chargers free agent, free safety, uh, Eric Weddle, according to Joseph P- uh, Pearson of the Charlotte Observer. Head coach Ron R- Riviera and secondary coach Steve Wilkes both worked with Weddle during their time in San Diego. Uh, Weddle has been to the playoffs once in the last six seasons. I, Why did I bring that up? Uh, and would welcome a chance to play for a Super Bowl contender, of course. Now, this would be huge, and I think it would be the smartest deal, in case, unless he's worried about, you know, and he, and he wants money. If he wants a ton of money, then maybe the Carolina Panthers aren't the best spot for him because I don't know if Carolina's really going to spend that much on him. But if he's more worried about championships, then this is going to be a great spot. They need a free safety. You already have a solid cornerback position. Obviously, have one of the best defensive line positions. You obviously have one of the best linebacker positions. Add Eric Weddle into that mix, and man, this Panthers defense gets a little bit scarier with Eric Weddle's playmaker ability being all over the field and what opportunities that could bring Eric Weddle at that safety position. And teaching some of the younger guys is also another plus. So this would be kind of fun to see Eric Weddle knowing that he's now going to leave my beloved Chargers because my Chargers are stupid. Uh, it'd be perfect for him to go to the Panthers 
and, and play in a big spot like that and play for a contender for the next several years now that you know the offense and Cam Newton are capable of doing what they just did last season. Uh, free agent running back Alfred Morris thanked the Redskins on Saturday in a farewell message on Instagram. Uh, Washington had brief discussions with Morrison headed uh, that before he was going to free agency, but there hasn't been a contract offer yet, and there won't be at least for right now. And Alfred uh, is probably right, assuming he's played his last down in Washington. Quote, no matter what happens, I will always be a part of Redskins Nation. Thanks, uh, and a special thanks to all the fans and their abundance of love, support, and loyalty. Uh, he Morris has rushed for at least 1,000 yards in each of his first three seasons. And then last season, his fourth and final season with the Redskins so far, uh, he only got like 700 yards. And the team just kind of moved away from some for some weird reason again. Another stupid thing by... You know, Jay Gruden thinking he can just run this team straight to the ground, which he's going to eventually do. Uh, the Denver Broncos are offering Brock Osweiler three years, 45, over $45 million, and it's unknown how much guaranteed the money uh, the Broncos are offering. But the Houston Texans are also in the mix, as a report came out a few days ago that uh, the Broncos and the Texans are the favorites to sign uh Head coach, or head coach, really? Uh, it's a favorite to sign Brock Osweiler, uh, but he's likely to remain in Denver, at least I think. I mean, Houston's not really going to be a playoff, or excuse me, a Super Bowl contender. They'll be a playoff contender, but you're going to have to deal with the Colts. You're going to have to deal with Jacksonville, who's slowly getting better. And the Tennessee Titans can be up and coming. But also, you just seen the, the history of the Texans just... And I know it's a short history, but, man, they cannot get it together. And there's really not stability there. With the Broncos, you have stability. You just won a Super Bowl. The defense is still going to be very solid, even though they lost a couple of players already. It's still going to be the same offensively. Um, why not stay and take the money, too? I don't know. I, I think staying with, with the Broncos is the best thing for him. Uh, the Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, released wide receiver Greg Jennings, and it was uh, a move that was expected as Jennings was, was a non-factor. He caught 19 passes for 208 yards and a touchdown, and the Dolphins have saved $4 million with his release. Uh, former Atlanta Falcons wide receiver Roddy White opened up about being released after 11 seasons. Uh, White participated in the UAB, University of Alabama, Birmingham, that is. They're back. Uh, alumni football game Saturday and said he wasn't too upset about the Falcons final decision quote they showed no indication I was going to be there so I was kind of expecting it already end quote he ended the season as the team's fourth leading receiver with 43 catches at for four uh, excuse me 506 yards and a touchdown after not catching a pass in consecutive games near the start of the season White expressed his displeasure with the role and saying he did not want to just be a blocker end quote or excuse me quote what Shanahan expected from me, Kyle has Shanahan, that is, his offensive coordinator, uh, and what I expected from him was totally different. I expected to play a bigger role in the offense, and that's what I wanted to do. But he didn't have that in his desires. He had other people that he wanted to play my role, so he wanted me to be out of the offense. That was the whole thing, and it is what it is. I can't do anything about it. I can't change his way of thinking or anything like that, and I can't, and I can just do what I did which was handle my business and get myself prepared for this moment, end quote. White had two years remaining on his contract and would have uh, had a salary cap just over $6 million for 2016. And the team, again, of course, confirmed that they never uh, approached him about even taking a pay cut. They were just ready to move on from Roddy White. Uh, during an interview with 99.1 FM Seattle Seahawks safety camp chancellor for uh, Further detailed, the incident that happened with him at a, uh, what was it, Redmond, Redmond, and what he was trying to do with buying a gym, and uh, this is terrible, uh, the gym employees uh, called the police on him and his friends after Chancellor was, again, looking to purchase the gym and wanted to get more information see what was going on. Maybe he wanted to buy it. He was going out of business, stuff like that, and just shut down. But when they have more information, this is what he said. I know we don't have a lot of time with you, so I do want to talk about these tweets that we saw from you yesterday. What exactly happened? 
yesterday we we got a notice that a gym closed down on okay. the 29th. So we decided to go check the gym out and, you know, see what they had available, well, see if it was something we liked and something that we wanted to continue on to get more information on and proceed into getting it. So we went up there. Uh, once we got there, we seen, we seen we knew the building was already close. So yeah. once we got there, we seen two cars out front. So we're thinking, hmm, maybe someone's here. Maybe yeah. we can talk yeah. to somebody and get yeah. some information. Get a number, figure out what's going on. Yeah, you know? so yeah. We, we walk up to the door. We're knocking. Uh, nobody comes out. Knocking, nobody comes out. So we see two windows. Right here. So we want to see what the building looks like. We look inside, don't see anybody. We see how the building looks, take pictures so we can know what to go back to with our business plan and yeah. put everything together. We look, uh, take pictures out through the front door and all the other windows that they have in the front. So uh, I believe Candace was the first one at the door. She, she was the one at the door that seen the women first. Okay. Two women come out the back. Two Caucasian women come out the back. And uh, Candace, that. Our African American employee, <laughs> she's standing in the front yeah, alone, yeah. and she sees him. She's waving him down, like, "Hey, can we get some help?" Yeah. So we all see that. So we start going to the door. Uh, the last one to get to the door is my employee uh, Nick Martin, who is a Caucasian male. He gets to the door last. This is right mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Yep. He gets there last, and before he got there, the first thing the lady did was look at us with an evil devil look and shoot us all. Oh, the boogeyman, the like, black boogeyman, we, right? We're, yeah. we're in disgust, like, what? Yeah, we yeah. just want to get information. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just get information? That's all. Like, we don't want to do anything else but get information. We didn't knock on the door anymore after that. We just waving, like, could you please come here? But she, they decided to stand about 10 to 15 yards away behind a desk. Saying, shoot, you know, we're going to call the cops. Get away, we're closed. We know you're closed. The business is the, it's, it's already <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, we know, right, closed. exactly. <laughs> so uh, they tell us, get away, they're going to call the cops. We're like, what? Call the cops for what? Because we want information? So yeah. when the cops yeah. get here, we're just going to tell them we just want information. Want information? information. Yeah, you didn't uh, do anything didn't illegal. Do anything Looking in the window isn't illegal. So, asking for, you know, help. Yeah, so so we we, dropped, we decided to leave because we weren't getting anywhere. We decided to okay. leave. We get about five blocks down, pull up to a movie theater. And the cops pull us over. You know, we talk about the situation yeah. and we just leave. Yeah. Like, it was so simple to get it over with. But wow. it's just crazy how you have to go through that in 2016, yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's and in Washington awesome. State, you think and we're a melting yeah, pot. Exactly. We're, you know what I mean? Like a place the, I call a second home. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so what I'm hearing, though, with my 12 ears is that Cam Chancellor wants to buy a gym in Washington <laughs> State, which means Cam Chancellor Seahawk, right? <laughs> That's what you uh, <laughs> there we go. Force is the company that Good deal. Force will be the gym. The Washington Redskins also released Robert Griffin the third on Monday. They cut Jason Hatcher and Deshaun Goldson. And that is it. RG three is now officially a free agent. It's free to sign anywhere. And it's uh it's gonna be interesting to see where he goes. Uh you know, obviously Texans have come up, the Cowboys have come out. Just about almost every team has come up for Robert Griffin. And over 15 teams reportedly are willing to kick the tire to see what is up with Robert Griffin and what they're willing to, uh, what he's wanting a, as a deal and what they're willing to sign him for and, and see what he's about. And it's just going to be weird to find out what system. You know, he's been linked with Houston, but when you look at the offensive system that uh, Bill O'Brien has, it's probably not going to be the right fit. And for Robert Griffin, it's a great thing that he did not get traded because he needs to have the opportunity to pick where he wants to play for several reasons. And a lot of them are just common sense that I don't need to go over, like where you're going to live, uh, and state tax, stuff like that. But he's also got to look at, you know, be willing to sit, be willing to go somewhere Truly learn from a great quarterback and and go from there and, and play in a couple of years. You look at the great quarterbacks that are still playing that only have a few more years in them, go there. Learn a system that is something you know based on film and recent history that you could learn that offense and you could play within that offense without having to change your playing style. If at any moment you feel the urge that and something in your gut, in your mind, in your heart that you think, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll have to change it a little bit, or maybe they would have to change Uh-uh, scratch it out, done, throw it away, move on to the next team. I don't care what the city is, what the state is, what you want in it. You can always travel there and see it, and most likely you're probably going to play them at least once in, in a couple of years. Just move on. He needs to find a team that he is going to be 
that he can fit in that offensive system, whether it's this year, whether it's in two years from now, and play. That's what he needs to do. Um, so signing with Houston or signing with Dallas because it's in Texas is a stupid reason. It's a stupid reason. That shouldn't be a reason he should just go there. It should be for knowing that he can fit in that system without having to change a thing or something significant. Uh, so, you know, he can go back to being what he once was. Uh, Broncos defensive end Malik Jackson is leaving. He's set to join the Jacksonville Jaguars after uh, agreeing to a deal with Jacksonville. The deal is six years and worth $90 million, averaging $15 million per season. Jackson, who was a fifth-round draft pick in the 2012 draft, uh, posted career-best 45 tackles this past season for the number one NFL or excuse me, the NFL's number one defense, and he knocked down a career-best seven passes. The Jaguars were uh, among the league's worst teams in defense overall, but also passing the rusher in 2015 with 36 sacks. Andre Branch and Chris Clemens, their two top edge rushers uh, from the past several several years, uh, only had seven sacks, and neither one of them is going to return in uh, 2016. So, uh good news is now you have nearly uh, what uh oh wait a minute breaking news uh marvin jones is signing with the detroit lions he's leaving the uh, cincinnati Bengals and signing with the detroit lions that has just happened uh one of the detroit lions or detroit newspaper people just tweeted it yep so that is awesome i guess i don't Huge loss for Andy Dalton, though. Uh, anyways, back to what I was saying about the, the Jaguars. Nearly $80 million to spend this uh, in, in salary, ca- salary cap to spend this offseason. They use a bulk of it to uh, Malik Jackson, and rightfully so to him. Uh, they have, you know, the good thing about this defensive line, what's going to improve, you know the offense is getting better. It, it, it truly is. It's getting fun to watch for the Jacksonville Jaguars. But their defense, they have defensive tackles send, uh, De- send Derek Mark, who led the team with eight and a half sacks in 2014, but missed nearly the entire season last year with various injuries. When healthy, he's one of the best defensive tackles. You have him and Malik Jackson in the middle, plug it up, and then you have Dante Fowler on the other side. Woo, this Jacksonville team is getting better. They draft a cornerback maybe in the draft, or they get – uh, you know, the draft safety quarter cornerback, this team is going to be something really quick. I, I'm, I'm starting to like the Jacksonville Jaguars. Not jumping on no bandwagon, but I'm starting to like them just a bit. Uh, after visiting the New York Giants and Tampa Bay Buccaneers, defensive end Charles Johnson is expected to re-sign with the Carolina Panthers on a one-year deal. Sources told ESPN that the deal is worth $3 million, and Johnson had turned down offers worth $6 million per year with other teams to remain with the Panthers. He will turn 30 this offseason and was released uh, March 3rd after nine seasons with the Panthers, and he ranked second all-time in sacks with 63.5 and forced fumbles at 17. He said that he almost signed with the Giants. Quote, I came pretty close, but ultimately my heart is in Carolina. It's not about the money. Carolina is my home. I wouldn't have been happy if I went somewhere else. The Giants are a first-class organization, but now I have one more year to get back where I want to be, at home, end quote. That is somebody I like. Charles Johnson, I like him. I'm going to try to get an interview with Charles Johnson. I like him. That's what it's all about right there, saying that it's not all about money. It's about winning and home and family. Home and family go together. So that's what I like about uh, Charles Johnson right there. He will stay with the Carolina Panthers. Didn't say, look, he knew he knew why he got released because his salary cap was too much, and he said, you know what, I'll come back one more year. Uh, Seattle Seahawks linebacker Bruce Irvin. He didn't want to stay home, and whether that's his actual hometown or his NFL home, he's leaving. He plans to sign not with the Atlanta Falcons like most people thought, like I thought he would probably leave, or maybe the Jacksonville Jaguars. No, he's going, he's staying on the West Coast, and he's going to the Oakland Raiders. Wow. Wow. 
One connection Urban has to Oakland is defensive coordinator Ken Norton Jr., who served as a, line, as a Seahawks linebackers coach for the first three years of Urban's career and helped Urban transition from his role in college as a true defensive end. Now, Urban has 22 sacks in his four-year career with 37 starts in 58 games. Last season, he had five and a half sacks and 38 tackles. So this is huge um, for the Raiders. You know, the Raiders, they also got a, a big-time left tackle in Kalichi uh, Osmili. I hope I said that right. He used to be with the Baltimore Ravens. He's now with the Oakland Raiders. Huge left tackle. If And if they can keep Donald pinned too, even better offensive line for the Raiders. And now you have Bruce Irvin, a pass rushing defensive end. You add that with Khalil Mack, and who seems to get better and better, and especially coming off of the season he did last year in the young Raider defense. They just get some secondary, and the Raiders are playmakers, ladies and gentlemen. It, it, you know, with their first round draft pick, they'll most likely get, you know, Vernon Hargraves out of Florida or Mackenzie Alexander out of Clemson, both cornerbacks. You get one of those guys, you know, they add uh, to their running back, to their wide receiving core, and get more DBs, young defensive end linebackers. You know, they, they got a few amount of picks. They can, they can rack up on this. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not when it comes down to it. You get all of this, and bam. The Raiders are freaking playmakers. We could eventually see the Raiders and Jaguars back into the playoffs like it's the early 2000s or something. It's going to be crazy. Uh, it's going to be crazy. And speaking of the Jaguars, again, they have just signed or will sign running backs, uh, excuse me, New York Jets running back Chris Ivory. He turns 28 uh, here in a few days on March 22nd. He set career highs with the New York Jets last season and carries with 247 and rushing yards 1,070. And rushing touchdowns with seven, and uh, also in receptions with 30, showing he could contribute out of the passing game. So Ivory's going to be reunited with former Jets general manager John Isdick, who traded Ivory from the New Orleans Saints in 2013. Isdick is now a special assistant to Jaguars GM David Caldwell. Uh, Again, Detroit Lions have signed Marvin Jones, former Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver, and it looks like I haven't seen any years just yet, but they're saying eight million dollars per year, so pretty solid contract. Um, let's see, no, no years. Hold on, let me tweet this. Uh, Lions will sign will sign former Bengals uh, wide receiver Marvin Jones. Uh, okay. Oh, whoops! Whoa! 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 whoa. Okay. All right. So moving on, uh, we also have the Mario Williams. He is leaving, obviously leaving the uh, Buffalo Bills and now signing with the rival Miami Dolphins. He's agreed to a two year contract with the Miami Dolphins worth 17 million and plus incentives that could push it to 20 million dollars. Now, it's unclear what Williams' addition means for the futures of Oliver Vernon, who they place a transition tag, and some are saying they will take that off and just let him enter free agency and just say, screw it, we don't want you anymore. And also Cameron Wake in Miami. Now, Wake is 34. He's coming off a season-ending Achilles injury and is scheduled to make $8.4 million in 2016. Dolphins are wanting to reduce that. Wake is not going to take a pay cut, a.k.a. that means he could get cut here pretty soon. I doubt he'd get traded with his age, injury, and a lot of money. Three negatives you don't want to have. Now, the Dolphins appear intent to retooling that defense. And the signing of Williams comes one day after Miami had agreed to a trade with the Philadelphia Eagles for cornerback Byron Maxwell and linebacker Kiko Alonso. But we got to hold our horses on that because, according to multiple reports, this Tuesday morning, Excuse me, this Wednesday morning. I don't know what day it is. Uh, the trade might be off. It might be. It's, quote, dead right now. Miami views it as a dead trade. As the physical, which was performed in Miami for both players in Kiko and Byron, uh, and it showed that Byron Maxwell's shoulder has a bit of an issue, and they're wanting to look more into it. They said right now the deal is Miami views it, again, as dead. That, those are their words. 
They said it's dead. Maxwell, as we speak right now, as I speak, as this is recorded at 828 a.m. Central Time, uh, that's 928 Eastern Time in Miami, they are looking at it again. They, Maxwell is with doctors right now. They're trying to look at the shoulder to see what the seriousness of it is. And that's all they've said. They haven't said whether it's a rotator cuff, whether, you know, what exactly it is, a muscle, a nerve, ligament, whatever it might be. They have not said. They just said it's a shoulder injury, a shoulder issue. And if so, the trade will be done. Now, Miami, they didn't really re- re- uh, release what they were giving up other than they were saying they're giving them draft picks. They're giving Philadelphia draft picks. And, and one of them included, obviously, the first rounder, but it just swapped picks. So Philadelphia would go from 13 to 8, and Miami would go from 8 to 13. So we'll have to see how that goes, and I'm sure right after the show is over with here in just a bit, we will find out here pretty soon. Uh, Colt McCoy, I can't believe we're saying his name. Quarterback for the Washington Redskins. He has re-signed his deal and will stay as the backup to Kirk Cousins. It's a three-year deal. And the San Diego Chargers will sign former Browns wide receiver Travis Benjamin. Also, Alshon Jeffrey, he signed his franchise tender to stay with, excuse me, with the Chicago Bears. And also, Ian Williams, defensive tackle for the San Francisco 49ers, has uh, re-signed for a five-year deal. Staying there, so... That's the news that we got as of right now. Uh, obviously, w- there will be more, so be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Short Sports Show, and the wi- the website. Be sure to check that out, guys, theshortsportshow.squarespace.com. The link is in the description no matter where you're listening to. So go ahead and type it in and check out all the beautiful articles that we have for your beautiful, beautiful eyes. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening. It's It's been awesome. It's been crazy. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys next Wednesday morning. As always, God first, God bless. I'm out. Peace. Forever. I'm going to do this here forever. Forever. I'm going to do this here forever. Forever. I'm going to do this here forever. Forever. I'm gonna do this here forever. Uh, I didn't came way too far for me to stop it now. I didn't work way too hard just to drop it now. We came so.